This video is to show you how to the, operate the instrumentation for experiment P5, which is a ternary two-phase system with three components, that means. This instrument that I'm leaning on right now is a gas chromatograph. You're going to be analyzing using a gas chromatograph. You've sent samples for gas chromatography last year, but this time you'll actually use the machine yourself. The machine injects your sample here, and inside we have an oven. And you inject your sample, it goes in and around and around the column, and in the column the separation actually takes place. At the end of the column it goes up here and there is a detector underneath. Now you need to have all this at appropriate temperatures, so we will set that right now. The first thing to do is to turn the gas on, which is over here. The carrier gas is helium, and there's a tank of it here. Just open the cylinder all the way. Uh, Righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, so turn it as far counterclockwise as you can. There's about 2,000 PSI in here, and it's flowing out on this regulator at 42. The other thing to do is actually turn the electrical power on, and that is right here. And that should be coming on now. It's starting its self-test. Moving back over here. All right, it's now passed its self-test, and we check for the parameters. We've actually labeled the parameters here. Some of them will have stayed in the instrument's memory. Check the injector temperature on this button here. It's set to 130, and it's warming up now. It's at 74, 75, 76. That will equilibrate at uh, 130 very shortly. The detector is set to 105. It's climbing up from 75 now. The oven temperature is off at the moment, so we set 115, enter. So we've got that temperature, and it's now heating up 40 degrees, 42. So by the time we come to inject, all of this will have equilibrated. When you inject, the injector chamber is kept at a high temperature. The highest boiling component of the mixture is toluene, which boils at about 110. So it's set at 20 degrees above that. So as soon as you inject, everything immediately vaporizes and is carried by the flow of the helium along and around the column. And in separate components, we've set up the situation so they will separate, it'll come to the detector. And we will get the signal for that over here on the computer. Okay, over here on the laptop, your TA will give you the laptop. Invoke this as user. Okay, and you want to invoke the program Peak Simple 2.83. So we'll do that. While that is firing up, this beige box underneath is actually the integrator. It takes the analog signal from the gas chromatograph, converts it into something digital so that the computer can handle it, the information. Now the first thing we need to do here is reset the parameters. Unfortunately, the defaults are not what we would like them to be. And you will end up with little tiny gas chromatograms scrunched into one corner of the page if you don't do this first. Up here in the top right is an indication of time. It's in decimal minutes, not minutes and seconds. So take your cursor pointer and to the almost top left corner of the screen, click and drag. Whoops, there we go. And watch this time. You only want to take the first three minutes. This, what I've got there is too wide. It's eight minutes. So I'm going to shrink that down to 4.5, 3, oops, a little bit more than that, three minutes. Okay, and then you release the cursor, and the full screen is now three minutes, and you'll have a much easier to read screen. We now have to reset the printing defaults. There is a print icon in the top row, and you click on that, and you get a pop-up menu. There's a few things you need to do at this point. There is three check boxes. Uncheck the print header. The next thing you do is go to print grammatograph and click on the format button next to it. Here we have chart speed. That is set at half a centimeter a minute. You want to set that to five centimeters a minute. 
And then there are other things that have font buttons. Click on every font button you see. The first one is for overall. And click on 10 point, otherwise it will come out at 3 point and everything will be hard to see. Then you're back here, again, left margin, font, 10 point, OK. On peaks, font, 10 point, OK. And likewise, right margin, font, 10 points, OK. Then we click OK for that one. And we're now down to print report. Click on format there. And again, we need to click on font and take it to 10 point, OK. And then OK again. And you have OK. You have now reset the print uh, defaults, and everything will work and give you a decent looking print by the time you want to actually print it out. Now let's move to actually setting up the system. You will be making different combinations of cyclohexane, t um, methanol, and toluene in these test tubes. It's actually wet methanol, 97% methanol, and 3% water. If we didn't have that trace of water in there, it, would all, it wouldn't resolve into two phases. So take one of these tubes, and I'm taking cyclohexane here. You'll need to take 30 drops doesn't have to be measured super accurately, of cyclohexane in this, two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. As I said, you don't have to be super accurate because you're going to be analyzing the system on the GC later. Then you take methanol and likewise add about 30 mils. 30 drops, excuse me. Twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. All right, now that has resolved into two phases, but they haven't mixed. So take a plastic dropper and suck the entire contents of the tube into the dropper and shoot it out. And do that a few times. And that will cause it to mix closely and when it resolves again, right now it's gray, but when it resolves again into two phases, the system will be at equilibrium. You're going to do that for seven different tubes with equal amounts of cyclohexane and methanol, and then you leave one of them with nothing else in it. In the other ones, you add five drops of toluene, 10 drops of toluene, 15, and so on until you get equal amounts of cyclohexane, toluene, and methanol. Now, at this point, I'm going to start doing some injections. The syringe is kept in the drawer. It's somewhat delicate, which is why we keep it in this bag, box rather. Now, I'll try and hold this so the camera can see it, but uh, we will insert slides so that you've got a better idea. This is the barrel of the syringe. The needle, you'll notice, is not very thick because we're only dealing with 10 microliters here. The plunger inside the glass part of the barrel is likewise about as fat as the needle. It's very difficult, it's very easy rather, to squinch that and uh, cause it to fold. So we've got the blue part is a plunger guard, and you'll see the part that you actually pull out is quite thick. And so you're not going to have a problem bending anything. And then I'll take another mixture. This has actually got toluene in it, so that you'll see three peaks. And there are two phases here, and I hold this in my hand like this, between my thumb and two fingers, and when I put the syringe in, I try and hold the neck barrel of the syringe, rather, place the tip of the syringe needle in the middle of one of the phases, and then withdraw a full amount, that's 10 microliters. Then shoot that out onto a Kleenex. We'll do this two or three times to wash the contents of the syringe so that we are sure that the contents is exactly the phase we're investigating and that it's not cross-contaminated from a previous sample. I've got the sample the syringe, rather, fairly filled. And what I'm going to do now is push this down 
to two microliters. That's how much you want. And we will insert a photograph so that you can see this a little more clearly. Wipe off the tip of the syringe. And this has now got two microliters of the top phase of that mixture. And we're ready to inject it. Let's go over and make sure that the instrument is ready to go. All right. We'll make sure that the instrument is at the appropriate temperatures. Right here, the, inject the detector is at 105. We push the injector button. It's likewise at 130. Let's check the oven. It's at 115, the appropriate set point. So the machine has now equilibrated at the appropriate temperatures. And you can check these on here for what they should be. There are two injector ports up here. You'll be using the front one. And you take your syringe. And when you inject, you need to do this as smoothly as possible. So it's in, inject, out. Don't push it in and then hold it for a bit and then decide to push. If you do that, you get a really ugly looking injection. So hold it as vertically as possible. Push down, inject, out, and hit the space bar as soon as you can. And that will cause the trace to start detecting. All right. It is actually developing here on the screen. It may be a little difficult to see. I know from doing this many, many times that the first peak is going to come out at 0.8 of a minute. And we're at 0.35 of a minute. When this comes out, eventually the instrument will timestamp each peak for the, the maximum height of a peak. The first one's about 0.8 with the setup as I've got it here. The next one's just over one minute, and the next third one is just over two minutes. 0.7 of a minute, we're working on it here. And here we have the first peak coming out, and the second one will be coming out shortly. The, I realize that this is not going to be terribly easy to see on the screen, on, the, on camera, so we will insert some photographs of what these things should be. Once we get three peaks and it runs to three minutes, we will then stop the run. I'm going to do that now by going function, page down. And that stops the collection. Now, once we have done that, you want to print everything. So click on the print icon and then the print button. And the entire print will come out in Wahlberg 202. Now, from one that we've done earlier, your output will look something like this. Uh, again, we'll insert a slide, but there are three peaks notice, and they are time stamped. And the integration appears in the block underneath. They're identified in the left hand column by time stamp, and the area in square units is in the second column. That's what you're going to have to do, uh, make note of. Now, the other thing you will have to do is make sure that you know which of those peaks is which component. So you should perform an injection of about one microliter of cyclohexane, one microliter of toluene by itself, and then later one microliter of methanol. Do that two or three times, and when you inject them, the area under that peak will show you how much corresponds to one microliter of each of, each of those solvents. The, you have to do it for each of them because the detector is not equally sensitive to each of those components. So you need to take a ratio of the area of one microliter of toluene to the peak that you identify as toluene by its retention time, and likewise for each of the other two components. You then convert that to mass in each one and calculate the mass percent of each of the three components in the particular phase that you have sampled. You've got seven tubes, two phases. That's 14 data points, each with two or three, one or two or three components. You will then work that out to a percent mass percent of each of the components and plot it on triangular graph paper. I've got a sheet of blank triangular graph paper here. You will plot it on this. And at the end of this video, we will insert a series of slides that will show you how to plot on triangular graph paper. Once you've done one run, 
when you're doing the next one, you click in the top left hand side for new and that's ready to start another injection. Once you finish doing all of your injections, it's time to clean up. For this experiment, it's really quite easy. We've got a waste bottle labeled for experiment P5. You dump all of your solutions into there and stop it and everything goes back into the locker and the syringe goes down into the drawer. You don't need to wash any of these, they're pure solvent, so when they, would, they will dry by the next experimental time and they will be clean. The other thing you have to do, of course, is turn the computer off, and likewise the GC. So you shut off the gas flow, turn that all the way clockwise, righty-tighty, and turn the power off. Turn off the computer, give it back to your TA, and you are done. And that is how you perform experiment P5 ternary system in two phases. We will now show you slides on how to use triangular graph paper. This is a piece of triangular graph paper which is designed to plot ternary systems. In this case, it's the system X plus Y plus Z. Each apex on the triangle represents 100% of that component. So the top vertex is 100% x, and the bottom side of the triangle is 0% x. The percentages of x are seen along the right-hand side of the triangle, increasing from 0 at the bottom to 100 at the top. Likewise, the bottom left vertex is 100% y, and the numbers increase along the left side of the triangle, and the bottom side is 100% z with numbers increasing across the bottom as shown here. The middle point of the bottom, for instance, is 0% x, 50% y, and 50% z. Let's plot a point on this graph, 10% x, 60% y, and 30% z. First of all, we'll begin with 10% z, x, excuse me. Beginning with 10% x, the grid line that represents 10% x is highlighted in yellow here. The data point will be somewhere on this yellow line. We then move to 60% y, that's closer to the y vertex than to the bottom, and the grid line highlighted in yellow here. You don't actually have to find the percent %z line because the three have to add to 100, so specifying two means that you know the third. However, the 30% Z grid line is highlighted here in green, and of course it goes through the point defined by 10% X and 60% Y. The intersection of these two, or three, lines is the data point. Here it is, we've plotted 10% X, 60% Y, and 30% Z. And without the white circle highlighting, let's plot a second data point. This one is 20% x, 20% y, and 60% z in this example. You can choose any one of them to start with. So I'll start with 60% z, the highlighted line here, the 60% z line, then move to 20% y, and the yellow line here runs along the 20% y grid line. The intersection of these two is the data point. You could have used 20% x instead of y, and these lines all intersect at the data point. And so here we have highlighted the second data point, 20% x, 20% y, and 60% z plotted on triangular graph paper. When you have done your experiment, you will have all sorts of data points for the ternary system at different percentage compositions. Here are several separate data points plotted in yellow. And here is the curve that connects those data points. The dots represent the transition from one phase to two phases. The curve that connects the dots separates the single phase region of the plot from the two phase region of the plot. And that is how to plot data for a ternary system on triangular graph paper.